Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. The title of this video hopefully has you intrigued because this is something that I stumbled across quite recently whilst researching the historic Arab claims concerning ancient Egypt, and something that I don't think should be dismissed. The period between the end of dynastic history all the way up to the 18th century AD is a time of great unknown for the study of Egyptology. And, although medieval Muslim and Arabic writings are not always credible and are also often contradictory, they are packed with information that often goes overlooked and unnoticed. For example, did you know that an eyewitness account says that the now missing pyramidion on top of the Great Pyramid was actually shaped like an inverted bowl? Other credible Arab sources say there was a sarcophagus inside the Queen's Chamber of the Great Pyramid, as well as writing on the ceiling. Another source says that human remains were found inside the King's Chamber as well as treasures. This is the kind of detail that we find in Arabic sources, and one of the reasons why we shouldn't dwell on the fact that no objects, mummies, statues and so on are found inside the Giza pyramids, because these pyramids have been open and explored for at least 1,200 years, likely much longer, and those that ventured into them before the 18th century were more interested in treasure hunting than learning about history. They often didn't care about conservation and documentation. Treasure hunting by Arab explorers, as well as the reusing of ancient Egyptian stone, is the main reason why the history of Egypt is so fragmented and incomplete. There was more than 1,000 years of destruction and plunder, and so few records were actually written. The writings we do have are so often overlooked, and are not always deemed credible by scholars. Recently, I came across one incredible PhD study by Akasha N. Andali from 2003, titled Ancient Egypt in Medieval Muslim and Arabic Writings, and thankfully, this is available on the internet for everyone to read. I've linked it below in the description. El Dali provides the most detailed look at the history of Egypt in the most neglected period in the history of Egyptology. And, as they rightly say, some of the sources could fill in the gap between the classical sources and the European Renaissance. After sharing some of the information on Twitter with Andrew from Ancient History Criticisms, he too found it a fascinating read. And I have some really interesting things to share in the coming days and weeks. Things you may never have heard of before. And that brings me nicely to the subject of this video. 70 Missing Pyramids Close to Giza. Before I get to this mystery, it is important to tell you some background. Back in medieval times, Arab writers were creating manuals for treasure hunters. It was a new industry, a new career you could say, and a way for people to find riches, and they also hoped to find medicine and wisdom. As well as telling you where to find the treasures, the manuals also talk of protecting oneself against ancient magical talismans, spells you have to say before you enter a tomb and before you can take the treasure. Some spells were said to invoke the spirits of key figures in the Muslim religion. There was a real fear in approaching the ancient Egyptian relics. Some sources say that magical ancient books were found in underground passages of Egyptian temples books on alchemy written by Thoth, medicine that could heal blindness and leprosy, and of course there was so much gold and jewellery. There were many reasons why the treasure hunting industry started to boom, and these are the same reasons why the archaeological record is so incomplete today, and why the subject of Egyptology leaves gaps that independent researchers like many of us on YouTube are trying to plug. Some treasure hunters were reliable sources of information for scholars of Egyptian history of the day, people like the great al who wrote detailed and reliable histories of ancient Egypt, details that can be corroborated today. He seemingly had honest intentions to record history. He explains the things he saw in accurate detail, and also records things that were told to him. For example, al Idrisi was told by Sheikh Abu al futter al-Matalibi, the head of the treasure hunters, of an expedition with a group of his colleagues in an area east of Helwan. 
Aladrizi collated this account with that of another head of treasure hunters who brought to him a book on the subject that refers to about 70, yes 70 pyramids on the Mokotan mountain. As stated by Aladrizi, walk east until you pass by the area with lots of black roots like wood, till you find a cave, until you get to a high mountain leading to the tombs. Look down the valley of a mountain nearby 70 pyramids of black stone. Measure from the front of each pyramid 71 feet and dig. Go down 70 steps and cut into the mountain. You will find closed houses to the right and the left. Open carefully, you will find money, gems and inlaid jewellery. Thoughts of Indiana Jones and Lara Croft Tomb Raider spring to mind, especially because, as Aldali says in his PhD paper, some features of this landscape can be recognised. In particular, his reference to the black roots like wood, which can only be the petrified forest which is located in the desert east of Madi. He says it was only recently made a nature reserve area after much petrified wood had been carried off with the sand supplied as building material for the people of Cairo. He says no more on this particular mystery, but let's just say for a minute that this account is true. What if there is an unknown necropolis in the area he stated, another Valley of the Kings perhaps, that is still yet to be explored? Maybe it holds the missing mummies of key figures like Joza, Snefru, Khufu, Khafre, Menkore and so on. Maybe that would mean that the pyramid tomb hypothesis is dead in the water and would imply the great pyramids of Giza, Dashur and Saqqara were indeed symbolic or had some other function. At the minute I'm brainstorming out loud, because it's easy to wave away the historic claim of 70 lost pyramids simply because we can't see them today. But if this was the most sought after area for treasure hunters, would there really be much physical evidence on the surface today? The 70 pyramids of black stone could just have been small pyramids or pyramidian like structures, simple markers for ancient tombs, maybe destroyed for their stones centuries ago. But if they did contain gold and jewellery, these tombs would belong to high status people or royalty. Were they Old Kingdom, or could they belong to the pre-dynastic Madi culture, whose main settlement was also very close by? The description of where to dig and how to find the treasures does seem too detailed for it to be made up, and the fact that Aladrizi himself did record it does give the idea some credibility. As we all know, the Valley of the Kings was a place where prominent pharaohs were buried in later dynastic history, so it's not too much of a stretch to believe there could be another Valley of the Kings in pre-dynastic or early dynastic history. Again, I'm just thinking out loud, but the idea doesn't feel impossible. So where is this potential necropolis today? Well, as we are told, walk east until you reach the Petrified Forest, which is located by El Dali as being the desert east of Madi, and today we know that this is a nature reserve. It's actually labelled on Google Maps as Petrified Forest Protectorate, but according to a geological paper written two years ago, it is actually labelled incorrectly on Google Maps. It is actually this rectangular patch of ground labelled as investor area on Google Maps, which does worry me that it is being earmarked for development. It currently sits in the middle of New Cairo, which is rapidly developing around it. I don't deny that this is a speculative video, but don't be surprised by that, as I'm technically using a medieval treasure hunting manual to find what I'm looking for and I'm not on the ground in Egypt, and even if I was, I probably wouldn't even be allowed access to such sites. Furthermore, from what I can see, a lot of the area that needs investigating has already been built over, but even that doesn't stop me. I next went to Google Earth and rolled back the years to when the area was not under development, developments that really only started in the 21st century. And now we do get a better idea of the terrain. We are basically looking for a high mountain east of the petrified forest, and, to speak generally, he is referring to this area of land. In all honesty, Google Earth and Google Maps just aren't good enough for this kind of work. It does require being in the field due to the huge amounts of sand that have swept over it, 
but we can still locate local land elevations using the internet and we can look at the satellite photographs for clues. For what it's worth, to the east of the petrified forest, this patch of land is the highest. This must be the so-called mountain. Today we can see that there are sand-covered plateaus, as well as dunes and evidence of human activity and so on. There are small valleys running through the high ground, but to the east of this mountainous area, you do reach a much larger valley that goes on for some distance. Is this a lost valley of the kings? Zooming in to Google Earth, and there are some potential pyramid-like structures in the landscape, obviously now covered in sand, but they do look to have seemingly angular faces. Is this it? Is this the remnants of the ancient burial ground that was looted hundreds of years ago? To add some evidence to my claims, I'll also say this. This specific valley east of the petrified forest, following the description by Aladrizi, is precisely due east of the Giza necropolis. Let's put this another way. The Great Sphinx, which is lower down in terms of elevation, looks out across the River Nile directly to the east, directly towards a mountain, which hides a valley that Arab explorers said was hiding 70 pyramids of black stone, each related to a burial chamber, a chamber that contains gold and jewellery. And then, even though many hundreds of years have passed, even though the sites of interest have been looted and likely ruined, we can still see regular conical shapes, maybe with angular faces, poking through the sand dunes, at a place precisely due east of the Giza necropolis. You could even say that each pyramid is sitting inside a little enclosure, which seem to be oriented towards the valley, but maybe that's a little too much speculation even for me. Still, this region specifically seems to be unique in the wider landscape. As well as these regular pyramid-like structures, there looks to be other square or right-angled shapes in the landscape, like outlines of where pyramids may have once stood. I think shrines more than pyramids is a more appropriate term, with the bases only being around 10 meters wide, and therefore they have more in common with pyramid tombs of the New Kingdom. It is also worth noting that by looking at Google Maps, the stone in this region is also black. So the idea of black pyramids means they would have used local stone. So again, the idea does have some credibility. So, what could it be? Well, if this is an ancient burial site, the riches and jewellery does imply a royal necropolis of some kind, like another Valley of the Kings. And because the Great Sphinx looks directly out to this site, and because it's due east of the Giza Plateau, maybe it is the true 4th Dynasty Royal Necropolis, holding the mummies of Snefru, Khufu, Judefre, Khafre, Menkore, their queens, and so on, maybe placed there to keep them safe from potential grave robbers on the Giza Plateau. But saying that, and we know from the countless Mastabas at Giza that this was also a necropolis, at least for the royal household in key figures of the 4th dynasty. So maybe this necropolis is older. Maybe it's the royal cemetery of the pre-dynastic Madi culture that ruled northern Egypt before they were conquered. At this time it really is all speculation. But it has to be. You have to start somewhere. Maybe there is a simpler explanation, maybe these are just sand accumulations that are naturally formed, or maybe they are piles of rocks or rubble created in more recent times. At this stage I can't know for sure, yet you can identify them in recent history on various Google satellite photographs. These mounds haven't moved in at least a decade. I'm grounded in the fact that I'm just looking at Google Earth and following the instructions of a 7 to 800 year old treasure hunter's manual. But I have to say I have enjoyed the challenge, inspired by the work of Sarah Parkak, who is a well-known space archaeologist and has discovered countless sites of interest from satellite imagery. But if you find any information, if you see anything in your own investigations, please do let me know, and I'll be doing my own research on this idea. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.